If you're painting a dog portrait, you'll likely spend time getting the eyes looking realistic. But if you want to take your pet painting to the next level, you'll need to get that big wet nose looking right too. Here's how to do it. Hi, it's Anna Mason. In this episode of Nature Studio TV, we'll turn our attention to our canine friends. If you're painting a dog portrait face on, in most cases, the dog's nose will be the closest part of the dog to the viewer. So including as much detail as possible in the nose can help to create a hyper-realistic look to the painting. I'm gonna show you the steps that I followed when I painted this sweet spaniel's big wet nose so that you can apply this technique to your own dog portraits. Okay, so let's tackle the nose and I'm gonna go straight in because we've got the lightest tones painted there already. I'm gonna go straight in with a thick black mix of Payne's Gray and Burnt Sienna. And I'm gonna go straight into these really dark nostrils. Still using my treble zero brush and just looking to recreate the shapes. So we've got this line here. And then there's going to be little light flecks of highlight. So I'm going to just sort of paint the little lines around those try and create an impression of those. And we've got this especially dark line here. And then looking at the darkest bits of this nostril, it's really now, I just want to check what's going on with my drawing here. I think that's the line, I hope so. So that's all really dark there. And then it does, there's a few little lines there. And then it seems to get a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to water down a bit and get that darker down here. There's a few little flecks on the edge which I'll try and leave. And then I feel like it's got almost a slightly purplish look to it, this nose. So I'm going to add in a bit of permanent carmine, a bit more of the Payne's Grey. And now with this milky mix I'm just going to work on the sort of darker mid-tones, leaving any areas that are lighter. I wish I'd uh oh, I'm just going to get some kitchen paper. So just slightly went over that highlight. Let's see if I can get it back. Yeah. So. And again, just want to get a bit of that texture on the edge where it goes into the area of highlight. And then that whole bit can be filled in with this darker colour. And this whole bit down here can be. This is all quite smooth and dark. And down here too. Just holding off of any gaps. Any areas I think are lighter and just leaving those as gaps. And then watering down a touch more, but applying this, I see there's some little highlights there I'm going to leave. So just watering this down and then just, yeah, leaving a few of these little, as I come in, into this bit here, there's more of the little highlights where it's shiny. So here I'm just going to start to use the tip of the brush with this milky mix to start to create some of these little shapes. Little kind of almost little hexagons. Just try and get the size of them about right. 
going to have to go over them because they're I haven't done those dark enough I don't think and then it gets more solid there's less highlight as you come down here and here that dark color goes into the fur already adding another layer there but just trying to leave some gaps to create those highlights so looking at it again I um, could you go up a brush size but for speed I can stick with this one I'm just going to make it a little bit more purple and then I see less in the way of highlights over here. I'm just going to water that down. That looks too grey, so let's do some more burnt sienna and permanent carmine. And there are the occasional little bit of highlights, so let's try and leave that. And then it gets much lighter on the edge here, which I really want to maintain. And there's a sort of line effect there. So all of this is darker. We've got the pattern there, but I, can, I want it to be kind of darker and then I'll put the pattern on top. I can already see that this is going to be need, to need to be darker, so I may as well, seeing as that's pretty much dry, I could go in again, darken up another layer over that. This is really fun, getting this nose looking right so then going back to this but popping in the patterns a bit less highlighted up there so i think i can just that's it we want to give the impression of these but we don't want it to feel too uniform You can use this colour to darken up a round nose as well. Some little lines. I need to let that dry off so that I can put some more of these little markings in. So I'm just going to get a bit of, I need it to be drier basically, so a little bit thicker as well, but I don't want it too dark. It's more a case that, yeah, I almost just want it a little bit drier so that I can make these patterns some more. Because they will darken it up overall. can almost see a little line that comes and connects up with this line down here. And I can definitely see now it's dried that this is going to need to be darker still. So let's keep adding in the little shapes. So it's a case of having to do the detail, but then stepping back and checking overall, does it look the right shape? Are there darker shapes of color that we need to make sure are there? So I'm just looking and thinking, well, 
It's definitely a little bit darker here. This is going to be darker up here. May as well get a bit of that in now. And then a bit more detail into that edge. And then just darkening up again. So this is definitely the sort of more highlighted patch where the light's more intense. So I'm just watering the mix down and just kind of darkening up there. There's a highlight there. And then looking at these highlights, I've left sort of too much. So I'm just going to darken up. But this is a really dark area, actually. So I want to go back to a very thick mix, kind of black mix and darken up the nostril, just checking the nostril shape as well. Is it big enough? So we're doing our adjustments now. And probably getting that dark enough is then going to need me to darken up the mid-tones, etc. Yep, that's definitely what's going to happen. And like we did with the eye, I'm just going to sort of paint around here because this is going to make the nose feel a bit bigger to darken up underneath. making the hair marks as I do so and trying to leave a few gaps through actually. I was getting a bit carried away there. I need to leave plenty of gaps to this lighter fur. So I'm going to do some extra darkening up to bring the mid-tones in balance with a milky mix. And with this I'm going to add a bit more detail here to give it some texture. These highlights look a little bit pale now, so I'm just going to get a really watery mix and just knock them back a touch. I'm happy with the texture, but is it enough? I feel like the lines are a little bit, should be a little bit darker in here, so it's a bit of a nuisance having to go over them because they're fiddly, but. Better to reframe that and it's actually when you focus on the process it's quite fun so it doesn't matter that we didn't get it you can't get the tones right straight away I just don't think you can so this means we can just keep adjusting and I think it's getting that realistic look to it now which is fun to see a bit of extra darker detail here So just picking out a few darker lines again because every time it dries off it dries a shade lighter so I'm just going to do it again but I just think working in this gradual way is really the best way to do it. I hope this mini class helps your dog portraits look even more realistic. A full length video class of the full spaniel portrait is available now with Nature Studio membership where members have been achieving superb results. 
If you've enjoyed this mini class, please subscribe to Nature Studio TV, then pop over to naturestudio.com where you can sign up for free classes and find loads of resources to help you capture the beauty of your furry friends on paper. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.